Hello everyone, Jose J. Garcia with Garcia Mohome University here, bringing you a quick video. So I made a previous video where I was showing uh, home details and how to locate the uh, bins and typical things that you have to know as part of due diligence before you close or even initiate a deal or try to put a mobile home on the contract. A lot of things, okay? We can list them all, but the one thing that I wanted to show you all is because I kept mentioning a public site that you can all use as public. It's free. Some states are a little more restricted than others, so keep that in mind. But uh, here in the state of Georgia, we can basically see just about everything we need. So when it comes to verification, for instance, you know, part of the due diligence, I can simply as go to qpublic.net and I got all the information I need. Now, what I mentioned was when you go to the site and you try to pull up a specific property, like in sense when you have land and, and one mobile home, that's pretty easy to, to, to figure out which home belongs to what, right? Um, now, when you have a park, for instance, let's say 100, 200, 300, or even more pets, that could be a little time consuming in the sense of trying to find which lot number belongs to which. Just try to sit there and click on each one and figure out, is that the right one? Let me see some pictures, compare it, et cetera. Here's the thing. For one thing, um, pictures that are posted on the actual public records could be years ago. Maybe the home has been painted since. You know, a lot of things can change. But I want to show you how you can go into qpublic.net and actually find the one listing within all the listings that actually shows you the lot numbers. Now, again, every state, every city, county may be different and the restrictions may be a little bit more here and there. So the information is limited. So keep that in mind. But it's a good start point for any and everybody. Start playing with this site and make yourself uh, aware of all the information is here because it's very useful. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here with you all. And anybody can get on the site here. So it's qpublic.net. Uh, I put qpublic.net, qpublic.com. It'll come up either way, but then it adds this extra. I know not important. I mean, as long as you get to this site, qpublic.net. But anyway, so here, here's one park that I've done business in years ago. So, and again, I'm sharing something that is public. So it's not like I'm giving you information I should not. So you put the state that you come in and you're fine. State, Georgia, county. We're looking for the county that it's in, which is in this county. It's Walton County. Walton County, Georgia, a couple of additional um, searches come up and I want to search it by records. So public records, you click on that and I might be going a little quick here. So rewind the video and you can watch it as many times as you need. But once you click on that, you get this long sheet uh, and basically do you want to find it in which option do you want? Do you, do you have the owner's name, the address, <clears throat> the parcel number? um etc cetera, etc cetera on this it is typically easiest just put the address obviously right and unless you have the specific name that it is listed as in you know the name of the individual then that's fine uh this is sp specifically very important site that you can use if you have a seller that might be a little you you have sellers many times that don't want to share information with you it's just an insecurity and you kind of have to see from their standpoint but at the end of the day, the way I see it is if I don't have the information I need, then I don't even know if it's a good deal, if I can move forward, if I need to check, you know, all those things come to mind. So this is just one more place where you can go check and find out what it is that you need to find out. So let me put an address on this park. There it is. And you search. Now, these are all the lots. So, again, you can come in and you click. And you scroll down. Is this the information I need? And you can keep on all of them. Now, there's parks that you'll have. I mean, down in Florida where you have five, 600 pads, you can imagine how many pages of these they have, right? And I don't even think these are all would have to see, but um, looks like all the research. But you'll have an alternative ID. So you want to look for that one. And you'll have different numbers on here. It could be different LLCs, corporations, different owners, et cetera. But I want to find the one that stands out with the ID number on it. Okay. The reason that's listed like that, and if you see, it's different from all these ones, even the parcel ID number, is because this actually has all the information. See, if you look right here, there's no lot numbers. It is just Southside, the name of the mobile home park. It is the address, which obviously they're all the same address. The only thing that changes is a lot number. That's within the part, not the city. Um, and then obviously the parcel. And again, I don't know the parcel number. That, that's harder to get than anything else, really. So you click on the first. Sometimes it could be down here in the bottom. So just look for this, the MO parcel ID number. When you click on that, it's going to look like every other one. But if you scroll down, there you go. 
all of them. Now you have the homeowner's names. You have the lot number, right? Maybe you drove by the park and you saw the lot 212 might've been of your interest. Maybe. I want to find out a little bit more. Okay. It has all the information you need on here. So let me go ahead and click on this one. Lot 212. You click on it and there you have it. You have a picture of it. Bam. Beautiful. Notice what I said about old picture, 2013. So you see something to keep in mind, but if it's got the lot number listed on there, then that's the home that it is. And I still want to verify with the actual home and I want to verify with the title. So, but it, this is a great start. But again, the home is uh, 2013 here. It's likely this home might've been painted, you know, things change. So just keep that in mind. But if you scroll down, then we're back to having all the information that we need. What is the manufacturer? There it is. What is the model? What is the year? What is the size? What is the VIN number? There you go. It doesn't get any better than this. And again, free information, okay? Serial number, ID number, VIN number, all the same thing, okay? And here you have it. That is the VIN number. And you can do so much more due diligence and additional information that you may need right here, everything you need. You got the owner, you got everything. I feel a little weird showing you all this, but I mean, I'm not showing you anything else that you cannot go to qpublic.net yourself and figure it out. So I'm just showing you how to use this. Uh, but that's how you do it. And you keep on going. You see all the lots that you have. It'll show you the name of the, the owner. And of course, you can see the sum the park owned. So that's another way, too, for those of you out there that are wanting, does the park own all the homes? Are they going to want to do business with me? Does any resident or individual living here own their actual mobile home? Well, here's a perfect way to see. Um, this is the name of the park. So I obviously know that that one the park owns. This is not the name of the park, so I highly doubt it. Not the same name, not the same name, not the same name, not the same name, you get the point. Okay, there is resident owned homes here, which means that there's opportunities for you to invest. And if you go in here and you start seeing other LLCs, for instance, like Southside Mobile Home, that's the name of the park, okay, that's fine. But if you start seeing other, all these other corporations, LLCs, what do you think those are? Investors. Those are other investors that are in there that are doing their business. They're coming in here and doing what you may be getting into. So that answers again, can I do business in this park? Well, if there's other investors already doing it, I don't see why you cannot. These are all their new units, by the way. This park has come a long way. This is the very first park I ever invested in. So um, yeah, they, they definitely grown since I've been there. They brought so many new units and this is all that you're seeing. So, but again, Easy information, easy to get to, and free. You cannot beat that. And when it comes to part of the due diligence, you cannot skip the steps. So make sure you save this site, use it. Let me stop sharing here for a second. All right, and if you're looking for more additional coaching on this, maybe you're thinking also on wholesaling some of these, can you do some of this business inside the mobile home park? Parks may allow for uh, flips, but they won't allow for self-leasing. They don't want rentals or they flat out tell you you cannot do any business because everybody that own, everybody that lives there owns their, owns their own homes. So that may be the case. But yes, you still can do business. There's ways around that and there's ways you can work with the park manager and or park owner. You just have to be able to structure it accordingly. So that is huge. You just have to, it's explanation, explaining yourself and what are you trying to do? So we can definitely help you out with that. Visit GarciaMHU.com. And or email me directly right up there, top right corner, j at garcia mhu.com. Till next time, thank you for watching.